Hey guys, I hope you've had a lovely holidays. This time last year, I was actually applying for schools. And one of the things I realized is that um, TU Delft actually doesn't have a lot of their application portfolios online. So I thought I would share mine and explain my process and why I think I got admitted. Because as it turns out, I wasn't admitted for my degree. Um, about three months after I got my admissions notice, I received an email that said I was um, accepted to the school accidentally. Don't ask me how that happens, but what I think happened is they looked at my portfolio, they liked my work, and <laughs> when they double-checked my degree and where it came from, they realized that it wasn't considered good enough for the school. Um, luckily, I was still allowed to attend, and I have been studying here for the last semester. So I'm just going to start off with the cover page. I think the cover page is always an example to start with um, a really uh, visually arresting part of your work. In this case, I chose an image that is from um, my first semester at Cornell University. So um, if we go in, uh, Delft requires a letter of motivation on the side and you can see in my letter of motivation, I talk a little bit about my complicated schooling history and also my passion for architecture and essentially why I want to study there. Um, I think a lot of the schools, they want to know why specifically, what about the program that you uh, really like and they want to see that you've done your research. So the letter of motivation, it's really key to show those uh, certain things. Um, on the right, of course, I have a standard table of contents. And that's just because I think keeping things nice and neat is really important. Now, one of the things you might notice is I actually don't have page numbers on this portfolio. And that's because I actually ended up applying to TU Delft about three hours before the admissions deadline. Um, I lost track of the admissions deadline and I debated whether or not to even apply for the school because I thought I would be automatically rejected because of my undergraduate degree but decided to, at the last second, go ahead and apply. Uh, normally, I would actually have had page numbers down here to help orient the, uh, the viewer. So starting off, um, I have one of my most recent projects that I worked on. And one of the things that I did after graduating my undergrad is that I did not stop working. I did not stop exploring. So... I basically kept documenting the work that I was doing, um, creating things that I was really interested in, and that's something I really encourage all students to do if you want to end up going to a master's degree. Figure out what makes your heart beat and really explore it, and that's what's going to set you apart from other applicants. So obviously for me, <laughs> this is the seaweed, so I have you know, all my experimentations on the side. I have a brief description here about why I'm doing it and what it actually is so you know what you're looking at. Um, and here actually on the left, I have a project that I put together. Now this is something that uh, is an example of an entry that didn't go anywhere. Um, it, what did not win a competition, it did not get chosen but I still did the work and it's still an application of the materials that I was developing. So I thought to include it for context. Now over here on the right, we have another one of my built projects. That was again, something I was doing after graduating. Um, it's my solo work really. Um, and even though it is a solo work, I had a lot of help from teammates. So you can actually see that I credited who did what. And this is one of the really important things to do when you're making a portfolio is if you had teammates or you had an advisor or you had somebody helping you in any way, shape or form, you have to put that into your portfolio. Otherwise, it is considered a form of academic plagiarism. So if you're putting renders into your portfolio that are not your own, you have to credit that. If you're putting drawings in that another classmate did, you have to credit that. So just put their name in. It really 
people know that, you know, it's a team effort. Architecture is a huge team sport. So just include it. It's always better to include it. It, re it reflects better on you actually. So this was the, the project that we built together and this was my build team. And one of the things you might notice is I tend to have a lot of negative space um, on these pages. I'm trying not to overcrowd it too much. And I've created a grid in InDesign to do that. So we have more photos here. And over here is my thesis. So this came all, this is actually all before these later projects. This is from school. So I have, you know, my thesis advisor, I have his school name, and these are all required by TU Delft that they want to see this in the project descriptions for every project. Every school is different and every school wants to see a different number of projects. So really follow the school guidelines on how they want you to make your portfolio. So here I have some different drawings and every page is basically an opportunity to show a different skill that you have, whether that be your drawing ability or your modeling ability. And one of the things you might notice is I have very few renders in my entire portfolio application. And that's because I'm absolutely horrible at making renders. Instead, I have these collage like illustrations. And so that's what I decided to include instead of trying to figure out how to render really photorealistically uh, three months before applying to school. So there are a lot of mistakes with my portfolio because I applied last second and I left them in actually in this digital version. One of the things that you can see is I did not crop this image here. I wish I had. I would just look so much better and um, you know, Ideally, you want to give yourself more than three hours before applying to a school so that you can proof your entire portfolio before sending it and get rid of really small, annoying mistakes like that because it is actually super noticeable. So here we have some sketches. And again, here we have another mistake. <laughs> I left the corner in here. Um, it's just that always double check your cropping and your positioning and in design before exporting. So here actually um, I have my the rest of my thesis. This was worth three fourths of my grade actually. This was this project on the right here was the majority of my thesis grade. Um, when I did my thesis actually, the, the non CV part of the thesis, I guess you could say, there was no requirement to do um, I guess you could say conceptual drawings. Uh, but one of the things I did anticipate was I anticipated that I would apply. So when I was doing my thesis, I did go ahead and create all those drawings when I was actually studying. But even if you didn't, you can always go back and create drawings and add to projects that you've done in the past and refine them. TU Delft, one of the things they want to see is they want to see that you have some sort of statistical analysis, understanding of structures. That's how I decided to show this. I also had to show this for my exam as an architectural technologist. And I also had to show detailed drawings. So this was a, this was a good in-depth drawing that I had made where um, it's a little hard to see on this because it's a bit blurry. But the further you zoom in, the more you can see that I actually did detail this entire section of how the, the building would actually be built. And I do have these technical drawings. Um, so I think that was also very key and instrumental to me getting accepted at the school. As you can see here, um, you know, I really want the full Monty because my building had to be built. And then to leave off at the end, I always recommend including something that, you know, again, makes your makes your heart shine, something personal. It could be photography. Um, in my case, I have my sketches and my sketchbook because I have just sketched around the world uh, for about 10 years, almost. Um, so, so I included all of my latest sketches from my latest trip to Japan. And that's how I finished it off. 